Depression and Reverb. Alright, I've already got the drums sounding pretty good, but we can make them sound better. We can make them sound cleaner and fuller. And the way we're going to do that first is we're going to cover something called compression. Compression closes the gap between loud sounds and soft sounds. It reduces dynamic variation. This is much easier to do in post-processing. Um, if you're going to do it in pre-processing, in pre uh, you're going to need some really expensive equipment that I don't have. And as far as I know, there are no mixers that do it. There may be a high-end mixer somewhere that, that does it on individual tracks, um, but your basic mixers won't do compression. The most important things you need to know about compression are threshold, ratio, makeup gain, attack, and release. Now for this example, we'll draw what a drum hit looks like in sound wave form. You've got your attack of the drum that's really loud and then it'll decay very quickly. Now, the threshold is the point around which compression takes place. We don't want to set our threshold too high or we won't, it won't affect anything, and too low it'll squash the sound of the drum. So for this example, we'll put it about right here. Now, these lines represent the threshold and all the signal that falls outside of the lines is going to be crushed down into the lines, so this makes your sound softer. But now, where the attack of the original sound was very short, uh, the attack of the drum sound is going to be a lot longer and thicker. Now with ratio, this is how much compression takes place outside of the threshold. So a 4 to 1 ratio, uh, for every 4 decibels that you go outside of the threshold, it's only going to show 1. And for like a 10 to 1 ratio or a 100 to 1 ratio, it'd be so much that you're squashing down the signal and it would completely distort it. So you don't want to go to numbers that are that high. Uh, so now we've got the signal over here. And we're going to go to makeup gain. Basically this is just a volume knob. Now that we've crushed the sound down and it's quieter, we want to expand it so it's just as, a it's just as loud as it originally was. So now your signal is going to look like this. It is now the same loudness, uh, but the loudness lasts a little longer, so now the attack that was there is now here. Now attack and release relative to compression are just numerical parameters uh, that dictate how compression operates. So here if we've got our threshold right here, uh, the attack is the amount of time after the signal crosses the threshold that compression starts. So we'll put attack right here. And release is the amount of time after attack um, that compression takes place. So if the release is here, compression is going to compress the signal in this area, but not after. So this section right here will actually be identical to the original section up here because it is not being compressed. Too much compression eliminates dynamics. Uh, for example, you, you can look at uh, sound clips from two of my favorite bands, Porcupine Tree and Skillet. Uh, you can see that it, Skillet has been compressed so much that the sound waves are almost just a big wall of sound, uh, whereas in the Porcupine Tree clip, um, you can see that it's, it's, in my opinion, mixed a little bit more properly. Uh, where you have a lot more dynamics instead of everything being one dynamic through the entire song. Um, the, compression is the reason that when you're listening to your iPod or any other MP3 player, uh, sometimes one song will get done playing on shuffle and another one will come up and it'll be just a ton louder. It's actually probably not louder, it's just louder for a more extended period of time and, and seems like it is a lot louder. 
this is also the same reason that when you're watching a TV show and the commercial a commercial comes on and it just blasts you, it's because the commercial has been compressed a lot more and then there's been a lot more gain added to it, so it's a, a bigger wall of sound, basically. Uh, compression is most used on snare drums and your bass drum. Uh, this is used for solidity. Uh, you get a much... Um, a much less variation in your snare hits and your bass drum hits, but I like to use it in toms too because it can help make them sound fuller. Um, here are the compression settings for my two snare drums. Here are the compression settings for both the bass drum mics that I use. And here are the compression settings for my tom mics. Now, I have to apply a lot of makeup gain uh, for my tom mics because, as you recall in the EQ section, um, I showed you that I reduced the mids a lot and I just keep the low end and the high end. Well, when you reduce the mids, it actually reduces the volume of the track, so I need to put a lot of makeup gain in there. Um, and boost the volume of that so it'll match with the rest of the drum set. As far as overhead mics, you can compress them, but I prefer not to because I think overhead mics um, generally get a good image of how the whole drum sound should be and you, you get more dynamics that way and you, you need to have dynamics to make a song or whatever you're playing uh, sound a lot more lively and a lot more interesting.